Hey guys, it's time for the next few chapters of the tale of Despero. And oh man, guys. Despero was just sentenced by the Mouse Council to go to the dungeon and be with the rats. And this is a big deal because nobody likes the rats in the mouse community and nobody wants to spend time in the dungeons and Despero especially because, I mean, there's no stained glass windows, there's no Princess P, and there's no library to read beautiful books and beautiful words in. So he's freaking out, and he thought he was pretty brave for not repenting for his sins, but he just fainted. And the Threadmaster has come to take him, so let's see what a Threadmaster is. Chapter 11, The Threadmaster Cometh. When Despero came to, he heard the drum. His father was beating a rhythm that had much more boom and much less touch. Together, Lester and the drum produce an ominous sound uh, that went something like this. Boom, 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 tat. Boom, 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 tat. Make way for the thread, cried a mouse who was pushing a wooden spool of th red thread through the crowd. Make way for the thread. Boom, 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 tat went the drum. To the dungeon, shouted the mice. Despero lay on his back, blinking his eyes. How he wondered, had things gone so terribly wrong? Wasn't it a good thing to love? In the story, in the book, love was a very good thing because the knight loved the fair maiden. He was able to rescue her. They lived happily ever after. It said so in the book. They were the last words on the page, happily ever after. Despero was certain that he had read exactly those words time and time again. Lying on the floor with the drum beating and the mice shouting and the threadmaster calling out, make way, make way, Despero had a sudden chilling thought. Had some other mouse eaten the words that spoken the truth? Did the knight and the fair maiden really not live happily ever after? Reader, do you believe that there is such thing as happily ever after? Or, like Despero, have you too begun to question the possibility of happy endings? Happily ever after, whispered Despero. Happily ever after. He said again as the spool of thread came to a stop beside him. Happily ever after. The thread, the thread, the thread, murmured the mice. I'm sorry, said the mouse behind the spool, but I have to ask you to stand up. I have to do my job. Despero got slow to his feet. On your hind legs, please, said the threadmaster. It's the rules. Despero stood on his hind legs. Thank you, said the mouse. I appreciate it. While Despero watched, the threadmaster unwound a length of red strip red thread from the spool and try and tied a loop just enough for the neck murmured the mouse no more no less that's what the last thread master taught me enough thread for the neck he looked up at despero and then back down at the loop of thread and you my friend have a very small neck the thread master raised his arms and put them around despero's neck he leaned in close to despero's smelly to Despero and smelled celery. He could feel the Threadmaster's. He leaned in close and Despero smelled celery. He could feel the Threadmaster's breath in his ear as he worked at tightening the thread. Isn't she beautiful? whispered the Threadmaster. What? said Despero. Shh. Is the princess beautiful? The princess P? Yes. She is lovely beyond all imagining, said Despero. Just right, the Threadmaster said. He drew back. He nodded his head. A lovely princess, just so, like a fairy tale. And you love her as a knight loves a maiden. You love her with a courtly love. A love that is based on bravery and courtesy and honor and devotion. Just so. How do you know that, Despero said. How do you know about fairy tales? 
the mouse leaned in close, and Despero smelled celery again, green and alive. Be brave, my friend, whispered the Threadmaster. Be brave for the princess. And then he stepped back and turned and shouted, Fellow mice, the thread has been tied. The thread has been knotted. An uproar of approval went through the crowd. Despero squared his shoulders. He had made a decision. He would do as the Threadmaster had, Threadmaster had suggested. He would be brave for the princess. Even if, reader, could it be true? There was no such thing as happily ever after. Chapter 12, Adieu. The sound of the drum changed again. The final tat disappeared and it became nothing more but boom, 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 boom. Lester used only his tail, bringing it down with great force and seriousness upon the drum. The thread master retreated. The room full of mice fell silent, expectant, waiting. And as Despero stood before them with the red thread tied around his neck and 14 members of the mouse council perched on the bricks above him, two burly mice came forward. Black pieces of cloth covered their heads. There were slits for their eyes. We, said the bigger of the two mice, will escort you to the dungeon. Despero, Antoinette called out. Ah, oh, my Despero. And Despero looked out into the crowd of mice and saw his mother. She was easy to spot. In honor of her youngest mouse being sent to the dungeon, she had put on tremendous amounts of makeup. Each of the hooded mice put a paw on Despero's shoulder. It's time, said the one on the left, the first hood. Antoinette pushed her way through the crowd. He is my son, she said. I want to have my last word with my son. Despero looked at his mother. He concentrated on standing before her without trembling. He concentrated on not being a disappointment. Please, said Antoinette, what will happen to him? What will happen to my baby? Ma'am, said the first hood. His voice was deep and slow. You do not want to know. I want to know, I want to know. He is my child. He is the child of my heart, the last of my mice babies. The hooded mice said nothing. Tell me, said Antoinette. The rats, said the first. The rats, said the second. Yes, yes, we, the rats, what of them? The rats will eat him, said the second hood. Ah, oh, said Antoinette, mon dieu, my God. At the thought of being eaten by rats, Despero forgot about being brave. He forgot about not being a disappointment. He felt himself heading into another faint, but his mother, who had an excellent sense of the dramatic timing, beat him to it. She, ex she executed a beautiful, flawless swoon, landing right at Despero's feet. Now you've done it, said the first hood. It doesn't matter, said the second. Step over her, we have a job to do. Nobody's mother is going to stop us to the dungeon. To the dungeon, repeated the first hood. But his voice, so deep and certain a moment ago, now shook a tiny bit. He put a paw on Despero and hugged him forward, and the two hoods and Despero stepped over Antoinette. The crowd parted. The mice began again to chant, To the dungeon, to the dungeon, to the dungeon. The drumbeat continued, boom. Boom, 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 boom. And Despero was led away. At the last moment, Antoinette came out of her faint and shouted one word to her child. That word, reader, was adieu. Do you know the definition of adieu? Don't bother with your dictionary, your dictionary. I will tell you. Adieu is the French word for farewell. Farewell is not the word that you would like to hear from your mother as you are being led to the dungeon by two oversized mice in black hoods. Words that you would like to hear are, take me instead, I will go to the dungeon in my son's place. There's a great deal of comfort in those words, but reader, there is no comfort in the word farewell. 
even if you say it in French. Farewell is a word that, in any language, is full of sorrow. It is a word that promises absolutely nothing. And that concludes chapter 12 and 11. So Despero is on his way to the dungeon. And I just hope he won't get eaten by mice and that he will find his happily ever after. But reader, I am not so sure. Here's a picture of the thread master place, placing the thread around Despero's neck. And the mice council, you can see them above, right here, and the two hooded giant mice. Mm. Just enough for the neck, muttered the mouse. No more, no less. But what gets me, guys, is why, how does the thread master know about the fairy tales and chivalry? How does he know? Interesting. Tune in tomorrow for the next few chapters. And don't forget to take notes. Bye.